So in this section, we're going to see how to find the eigenvalue for the given matrix. So let's review the definition of what was eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So if you have a times x equals to lambda times x, and then we call lambda as an eigenvalue of the given matrix. And x is called as eigenvector associated to the given lambda. So how did you find the eigenvectors? Well, we solved a minus lambda i times x equals 0 for non-trivial solution. So if you recall how we did to find an eigenvalue of the upper triangular matrix, well, we find um, lambda that makes a minus lambda i has non-trivial solution. But this takes a lot of time if a is not an upper triangular matrix because you need to find an REF of the given matrix. So there's a better way to find an eigenvalue of the given matrix. A scalar lambda is an eigenvalue of the given matrix if and only if lambda satisfies the characteristic equation, which is given by the determinant of a minus lambda i equals to zero. And if you write p of lambda as the determinant of a minus lambda i, then you will get degree n polynomial, and we call that as the characteristic polynomial of the given matrix A. So the reason why um, we have this if and only if condition is that if A minus lambda i times x equals to zero has non-trivial solution, well, this is equivalent to have A minus lambda i is not invertible, in other words, this is equivalent to half the determinant of a minus lambda i equals to zero. Okay, so let's pause the video and try to find the eigenvalues of a using the method given above. So basically, um, a minus lambda i is given by 3 minus lambda, 2, 1, and 2 minus lambda. So the determinant of a minus lambda i equals to ad minus bc, which is 3 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda minus, I guess, 2. So if you let this equals to 0, then we have lambda squared minus 5 lambda plus 6 minus 2 equals to 0. Or we have lambda squared minus 5 times lambda plus 4 equals to 0. And if you do the synthetic division, then we get lambda minus 4 times lambda minus 1 equals to 0. Or in other words, we have lambda equals to 1 or lambda equals to 4. So here, note that, well, the characteristic polynomial P of lambda equals to the determinant of A minus lambda I. And we set this equals to 0 to find the eigenvalue of the given matrix. Or in other words, lambda j, which is the eigenvalue of the given matrix, is a root of the characteristic polynomial, or in other words, p of lambda j should equal to zero. If we denote the subspace of eigenvectors corresponds to the given eigenvalue lambda j as e sub lambda sub j, and this is called as the eigenspace. And the basis for that space is called as the eigenbasis for the given eigenspace. So suppose that A is given by 3 by 3 matrix, that we have A minus lambda I equals to, so we have 4 minus lambda minus 2, 1, 2, negative lambda, 1, 2, negative 2, and 3 minus lambda. So, Let's pause the video and try to find the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenspace of the given matrix. Okay, so let's solve this problem together. So basically, the characteristic polynomial P of lambda is defined as the determinant of A minus lambda I. And if you choose the first row to expand, then we have... Um, 
4 minus lambda times negative lambda, 1, negative 2, 3 minus lambda, and minus negative 2 times, I guess, 2, 1, 2, and 3 minus lambda, plus 1 times 2, negative lambda, 2, and negative 2, where this gives you 4 minus lambda times, well, negative lambda times 3 minus lambda, and I guess it should be plus 2, plus 2 times 2 times 3 minus lambda, minus 2, plus, well, negative 4 minus minus 2 lambda, so it's plus 2 lambda. And this equals to lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 2. And this part equals to um, 6 minus 2 lambda minus 2. Or in other words, we have 4 minus 2 lambda. So this equals to negative 12 lambda plus 4 lambda squared plus 8 plus 3 lambda squared minus lambda cubed minus 2 times lambda plus 8 minus 4 lambda plus 2 lambda minus 4. And this equals to, so we have lambda cubed over here. So negative lambda cubed. And we have 7 lambda squared. And we can kill out two lambdas each other. Then the remaining term should be negative 12 minus 4. That gives you negative 16 lambda. And we have 8 plus 8 minus 4. That equals to 12. And if you do the synthetic division, then you get this equals to lambda minus 2 times negative lambda squared plus 5 lambda minus 6. Lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 2 times 3 minus lambda. So the root of the characteristic polynomial should be um, 2 and 3. So in this case, this one has multiplicity 2, and this is because lambda minus 2 has an exponent of 2 in the characteristic polynomial. So, once you find the eigenvalues, then you can find the corresponding eigenspaces. So, for lambda equals to 2, the eigenspace E sub 2 corresponds to the null space of A minus 2i. So, we need to find the REF of this matrix. And I guess A minus 2i should be um, 2, negative 2, 1, 2, negative 2, and 1, and 2, negative 2, and 1 as well. So, the RREF should be 1, negative 1, and 1 over 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this gives you the homogeneous matrix equation, a minus 2i times x equals 0. So, basically, the solution set equals to x1, x2, and x3. But we have x1 equals to x2 plus 1 over 2, x3, and x2 and x3. And if you separate the variable, oops, it should be negative. And then we get x2 times 1, 1, 0, plus x3 times negative 1 over 2, 0, and 1. So you can tell that E2 be the span of these eigenvectors. So this should be 1, 1, 0, and negative 1 over 2, 0, and 1. And similarly, for lambda equals to 3, if you apply the same procedure, you will get E3 equals to span of a single vector, 1, 1, 1. So, please check this by yourself. So, recall that we had the theorem in the previous section. So for distinct eigenvalues, all these eigenvectors has to be linearly independent. So basically, if you collect all the eigenbases from each eigenspaces for the given matrix, then you can potentially get a basis for R to the N. And in that case, we can think about the given linear transformation 
almost similar to a diagonal matrix, and in that case, we call that matrix as diagonalizable matrix. So we're going to talk more about that in the next section, but in this section, we're going to practice more about finding the eigenvalues. So let's consider a triangular matrix again, and let's analyze this matrix in terms of characteristic equation or characteristic polynomial of the given matrix. So in this case, we have a minus lambda i equals to 3 minus lambda, 2, 3, 0, 6 minus lambda, 10, 0, 0, and 2 minus lambda. So the determinant of a minus lambda i should be the same as the multiplication of the diagonal entry that equals to 3 minus lambda times 6 minus lambda and 2 minus lambda. And the characteristic equation of a should be this equation. So if you solve for lambda, then we get lambda is either 2, 3, and 6, which is again the same as the main diagonal entries. So degree and polynomial, the determinant of a minus lambda i is called as the characteristic polynomial. And the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue is a multiplicity as a root of the characteristic equation. Okay, so let's pause the video and try out part A and part B of this example. Okay, so first of all, the characteristic polynomial is given by um, the determinant of a minus lambda i. So in this case, a is lower triangular matrix. So a minus lambda i is again a lower triangular matrix. So we have characteristic polynomial equals to 2 minus lambda and 3 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, and negative 1 minus lambda. Okay, so if you solve for, well, characteristic equation, p of lambda equals to 0, then this gives you lambda is either 2 and 3 and negative 1. And for 2, we have multiplicity 1. And for 3, we have 3 minus lambda squared in p of lambda, so it should be multiplicity 2. And for negative 1, it has again multiplicity 1. So suppose that you have two matrices, A and B, and we say A is similar to B if there is an invertible matrix P such that you can write B as P inverse times A times P, or in other words, A equals to P times B times P inverse. So, one cool thing to observe is if A and B are similar matrices, then they have the same determinant. And this is because um, the determinant of B should equal to, well, we have B equals to P inverse AP. So you can write this as determinant of P inverse A times P. But you can separate the multiplication by the determinant. So it's P inverse times determinant of A times the determinant of P. If you rearrange the multiplication, then we have this times this times that one. Or in other words, you get the determinant of P inverse times P, which is an identity matrix, times the determinant of A. But we know that the determinant of the identity matrix is 1, so we get the determinant of A. So we're going to use the similar argument to prove that two similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial. And for this reason, these two matrices have the same eigenvalues. So let us quickly prove this theorem. So by the definition, we have b equals to p inverse times a times p. So b minus lambda i equals to, well, we can replace b by p inverse times a times p. So this gives you p inverse a p minus lambda i. But the identity matrix is the same as um, p inverse times p. Or you can put lambda 
in between p inverse and p. So like p inverse times lambda i times p. And then we can factor out p inverse and p, something like this, lambda i times p. So if you take the determinant for the both sides, then the determinant of b minus lambda i is the same as the determinant of p inverse a minus lambda i times p. Or in other words, this is the same as the determinant of p inverse, the determinant of a minus lambda i times the determinant of p. Or we can cancel out this two as above. That gives you the determinant of a minus lambda i. So here, the left-hand side is the characteristic polynomial of the matrix B, and the right-hand side is the characteristic polynomial for the matrix A. So for these reason, A and B have the same eigenvalues. So here, one thing that I want to learn is that we have proved that similar matrices have the same eigenvalues, but having same eigenvalues does not imply the similarity. So for example, 2, 10, 0, 2, and 2, 0, 0, 2 have the same eigenvalues, but they are not similar. And we will see why these two matrices are not similar on the next section. So lastly, we can extend the invertible matrix theorem using the eigenvalues. So we had until R from the previous section or previous chapter, chapter 4. So we've seen that A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to 0, or equivalently, 0 shouldn't be an eigenvalue of the given matrix. So, one very last thing to note. Well, similarity is not the same as row equivalence because row operations usually change eigenvalues. So, let's recall the example that I gave you in the last lesson. So, for example, like if you consider 2, negative 1, negative 1, and 2, then you can tell that the eigenvalue for this matrix should be 3 and 1. But this is row equivalent to 2, negative 1, 0, and 3. But the eigenvalues for this matrix has to be 2 and 3.